It is time to go over 17 reasons why I don't use Windows 10 as a daily driver, but not just complaining this video. I'm going to give you 17 fixes or alternatives to these problems in Windows 10. Uh, we're going to start on the Windows 10 desktop, and as I go through each issue, I want to show you uh, what's up with Windows 10 and why so many people hate on it. Uh, because, ooh, it's an easy, easy thing to bag on. So uh, let's go ahead, go through each one of these reasons and solutions. All right, so we're on our desktop, number one, with a bullet, forced updates. Now, if you ever go into your settings menu, you go into updates, you're always like, hey, oh my God, there's always an update every single day and it's always updating. Well, that's because you're a guinea pig. If you actually go over to my website, christitus.com, I've actually made a YouTube video about this, but I show how to only do security updates, not the feature updates, and change your branch readiness level so you don't get all these updates and bombarded for restarts and just all the terrible things about updates in Windows 10. This makes it very functional and more enterprise level style. Um, so I wanted to go ahead and say, number one, updates. Number two is gonna be the Microsoft Store. Oh, this thing is terrible. <laughs> I think there's nobody that likes the Microsoft Store. I don't even think people at Microsoft like it. They just are forced to do it. Uh, so anyways, why is the Microsoft Store so bad? Well, there's a lot of services and dependencies, so it bloats up your system a bit. And then also, it's not well put together in a lot of the stuff in here. Uh, when you get out of the AAA titles, borderline on malware. Uh, it's very, very strange how it is laid out. Uh, also, there's a lot of issues, like let's say Bedrock Minecraft, I play with my kids all the time. Uh, that one... I have to use the Microsoft Store for, so getting, making sure Xbox services and, and the actual tie-ins to the Microsoft account. Number three is gonna be the notification bar. Now, I turn my notification bar off because it's just terrible. It always is like bling, bling, and just, you know, I'm not gonna redo that. I, I, I see you out there, the people are like, ah, that's a funny noise you just made. But just come into notifications and actions in your settings, turn them all off, just disable all this. You don't want Windows suggesting you uh, whatever app paid them the most money this month to throw in front of you. You just wanna disable all notifications in Windows 10 and the notification bar in general because it's not very handy. Overall, the notification bar is just a productivity killer, uh, it, even if it was useful, which it's not, so disable it. Number four is gonna be the security center. Now this has been rebranded a whole bunch of different things. It's security, maintenance, whatever. Uh, it, it depends on what it's been. It's ever since XP era, I've hated security center, but this is its packaging of the antivirus and uh, malware removal tool that uh, Windows has built in. Both are okay now. They're not the best on the market. But they're not the worst either. I, I really hate like Avast and AVG and McAfee and Norton and uh, Trend Micro. Uh, all those are just terrible antiviruses. Windows beats them. Just use the stock one if you're thinking about doing anything like that. And if you're using one of those ones I just named, uninstall it and use Windows. Uh, and if you want something better, just uh, pay my recommended ones down in the description. You can click on that. Uh, ESET's what's currently uh, my recommended as it hasn't made me angry yet. Uh, <laughs> because a lot of times I, I recommend an antivirus and then over five to 10 years, uh, it falls out of my recommended because it becomes a bloated mess. So anyways, uh, getting back to Security Center here, uh, I usually disable most of the Security Center prompts. I do like to disable the built-in Windows Defender, and then I also like to disable malware removal tool. As they do bloat up your system, the scan times and things are a bit heavy uh, for most users, and I just really, really dislike uh, its layout and how it affects your system performance. So these are the things I don't like. Uh, by all means, it depends on where you fall as a user. Where, where are you on your risk level? All I use this for is gaming and nothing else. So therefore, I'm not really exposed. So I don't really want a lot of these uh, features that I don't particularly care for. Now, next up, a lot of times when you go to reboot your computer, you're down here, you hit restart, uh, you couldn't go into safe mode. You ran into a problem or a driver didn't install and you get stuck in a boot loop. You couldn't hit F8 to get into safe mode anymore. 
This is kind of a new problem because Windows 7 and prior versions of Windows didn't have this. Now there's a couple ways to get into safe mode. You can actually go into the restart and hold shift as your system restarts and it'll force it in. But I still like the old school way. It's considered a security risk. Uh, that's why they took it out. But to me, I'm just like, whatever, this is not how you secure a system. Uh, I always add Windows uh, F8 on startup to get into safe mode back on my system. So on Windows 10, I run my ultimate Windows setup guy, which I just did in the past video. This one command to do everything in this actual tweak, uh, you can see during the security tweaks, I actually do the F8 boot menu right here. This is clutch. I like having that boot menu, therefore I always have it. I, I always enable this on every system that I touch just because it makes my life a heck of a lot easier when I go to troubleshoot something. So if you're like me and you want your F8 back on startup, by all means, it, run this script or if there's things in the script you don't like, fork it from my GitHub project. Either way, you'll be set. All right, number six is gonna be security of Windows. This is kind of an interesting thing. Uh, one reason why I just absolutely despise just Windows in general. I mean, this is kind of an ongoing problem and it's just gotten worse as all the versions have gone on and all the years have gone on. But it is a resource hog and is constantly doing things in the background without your permission or knowledge. Uh, there's a couple things that you can do. I liked uh, open source software called Simple Wall that blocks all traffic uh, because there's a lot of back and forth on the internet. Like if you just go into performance and go into networking, you'll see it's always sending and receiving something while you have your system going. At no time is it never sending anything unless you disable your network connection. Uh, so this is kind of something I hate about Windows. Uh, there's ways to control it with simple wall. There's ways to minimize it by disabling telemetry. See the script I just mentioned uh, or watch the prior video. Uh, those are ways to minimize it. But as I said, minimize. You still can't ever get truly secure on Windows. I think that's just uh, a myth. You just, it, it's something that's constantly evolving. It's the most attacked operating system. It's the most vulnerable operating system. Uh, so when it comes to security, if you fall into the security realm of things, I highly suggest Mac or Linux. Uh, I'm a big Linux guy. That's my new daily driver, or has been my daily driver really for the past couple of years. And it's what I really suggest when it comes to security for those security minded people out there. Uh, it's far, far better than anything in Windows 10. Next up is going to be file sharing. Oh, file sharing in Windows 10. How I've always hated it. Uh, luckily in business, we really don't deal too much with it. A lot of times those are on separate NAS boxes or it can be centrally located in like an Active Directory server and it's all controlled that way. But just peer-to-peer -peer file sharing in Windows has always been terrible. And this is something that has gotten worse as time has gone on as the legacy systems are still there. So if I wanted to share my C drive, I can still come in here and do the old school sharing method. But if I wanted to do home groups and these other things that have kind of come about, you can also try those. I've tried them and they're terrible. Don't use them. Uh, if you're going to do any kind of file sharing through Windows, you can use the legacy systems. That's something I still do on occasion, but I still hate. Uh, a lot of times I'm using a centralized uh, share and usually it's on a Linux box or uh, a NAS box like a Synology, QNAP or anything else really than, than Windows. It's my last choice. I hate Windows sharing, always have. And uh, if you can use something else, do it. If not, use the legacy systems in Windows as they're the most tried and true. Now, still in the same room as uh, security, I will say uh, when it comes to telemetry and spying, uh, that, that general security portion of it, it's a big issue with Windows. Again, that one script right here rips out a lot of telemetry services. This goes through task scheduler, gets the telemetry that runs on a schedule. It also gets rid of a lot of the telemetry that runs through services. And then also it sets like group policy objects. All right, point nine is gonna be Edge Browser and Internet Exploder. Both browsers made by Microsoft, they're terrible. Some, you know, countries and uh, go local government agencies still require Internet Explorer to, you know, just submit legal documents and things like that. Oh, it's, there's just, there's so much to say here. All I can just say is Google it. 
Uh, and uh, just know that these are super insecure. And Microsoft Edge just gave up and said, you know what, we're just going to use Chromium Base. So if you use the new Edge, really all you're doing is using a glorified Google Chrome that's just Microsoft branded. All right, next up uh, past that is going to be Network and Sharing Center. I hate this thing. It's just terrible. Uh, this whole deal, like private internet, public internet, all these things, uh, it it's just possibly the worst iteration. This is the Windows 7 version. This is it trying to integrate into Metro UI. Um, oh, I, I hate it. I don't ever use it in business. Typically what I end up doing with this is just typing in cpl.cpl. This is the old school command from like XP getting in. I adjust anything I want to do in here. I change all my networking connections, those types of things using this old school uh, control panel because it just works and it's great. Uh, I don't know why they keep trying to make it worse, but they're doing a fantastic job of making it worse. One other thing is Windows Firewall, go into Start Run and just go WF.MSC. This launches into Windows Defender Firewall. You can change your inbound rules, your outbound rules, uh, adjust whatever you want. I hate software firewalls. They're just painful. Uh, I hate Windows version of the firewall. But again, uh, the worst thing you can do is disable the service. I There's a lot of workarounds. If you don't want to really want to use a firewall and just have it completely wide open because you're on a private network, you could create like an allow all rule and other things to bypass it. But by all means, I, I just, meh. Yeah, once you use it, you'll understand my pain. All right, number 11 is going to be Cortana. Yeah, it's terrible. Moving on. Number 12 is going to be suggested apps. What's a suggested app? Well, by default in here, you'll actually get suggested apps that just kind of pop in and say, hey, install Candy Crush. Okay. And you actually pay for Microsoft Windows and then they basically use it as shareware to sell other products through it. Oh, that's just terrible. So the other thing about Windows 10 that I hate is how to install programs. Like, oh, I need to install Steam. I got to go launch into uh, your internet and then go ahead and go download Steam. And then you're like, okay, go into here, click the download link, run it. Oh, it's just painful. Don't do this. It's terrible. Uh, I've been spoiled with Chocolatey. So I made an entire video on Chocolatey. I'll link it up here in the description as well. Just know that Doing it from here, I could actually do the exact same thing. So if I just do this and then just type Steam, it would go grab Steam and installed it. Obviously, I've already installed it through Chocolatey, so it doesn't matter. But this is the easiest way to do it for me. I love Chocolatey. If you have never used Chocolatey, oh, it's so awesome. It's so much better than finding random sites and having to go through their installer process and all that. It just does it all for you. 14 is going to be viruses. Uh, yeah, I already kind of touched on antiviruses, so I'm not going to beat a dead horse here. Obviously, Windows is pretty vulnerable. There's been some of the biggest exploits in history on Windows because it's the most used operating system, but it's also the most vulnerable. In 2017, uh, I had a lot of work that I needed to do because the NSA tool was leaked and there was a lot of issues with uh, people getting in and doing ransomware and other things. You can see these occasionally on like a Linux or Mac. They're not completely invulnerable, but they're far more secure operating systems. And uh, it's not nearly to the level of Windows because Windows has literally installed backdoors for like the NSA and other uh, government agencies to where they can remotely control your computer without your knowledge. And these are very, very scary and also uh, not good. So when it comes to viruses and those types of things, very, very bad. I hate Windows 10 for that. And I've lost a lot of hours of sleep because of it, mainly because I was sitting up patching some system late at night because an older vulnerability popped up that was so bad that I had to do it that week or that weekend. And uh, yeah, thanks. Next up is going to be registry backups. Now, this is a new thing in the last couple of years, ever since feature update 1803, which came out about two years ago. Pretty much everyone should be on 1803 these days. Uh, you can see what version you're on by just doing winver from run. 
I'm on 2004 right now. I don't necessarily recommend 2004, but since I only use it for gaming, I like to get the performance bumps. And I know that I no longer have proper registry backups. So over in my GitHub, uh, you can actually see I made a little script for everyone. You can either run it manually and manually back it up through a batch file, or you can run this reg file and then it'll do periodic updates like it's always done prior to a uh, feature update 1803. So if you want registry backups, which I think everyone should have, it uses a little more hard drive space, but it's worth it. Uh, just in case something does happen, being able to revert to a prior uh, registry point in time is pretty important. It's a uh, kind of something that I've done a lot in the past 20 years. Now back on the Windows desktop, I really can't show this point too well, but just know when you hit the start menu, you see news, you see Candy Crush, you see Netflix, you see all these crappy apps that are crappy Microsoft Store apps. It's just so bloated and there's no reason for that. Uh, again, I'm not gonna beat a dead horse. Obviously I've gotten rid of them using my ultimate setup script. I highly recommend just running that, getting rid of all the bloatware from the MS Store. Highly recommend, uh, but it's still a big gripe at number 16. Number 17, to finish this out, is during the setup process, having to use a Microsoft account. I'm sorry, but that just stinks. Like right here, I, I ended up blurring some of this out as I don't wanna give away my Microsoft account, which I don't use for anything, uh, but it, the fact they've rammed it down your throat and made things to where it's more difficult if you're not using it. And also like those local sign-ins and those types of things. This is just kind of a terrible thing when it comes to this. A lot of times there's a lot of shared information. It'll store like your backup wallpaper and things like that in the cloud. Who knows what they're doing and what, how they're data mining the, the stuff that from your login information. I, again, data collection at its worst. All right, that was the 17 reasons why. I know this is a bit longer video, but I wanted to go through and give kind of rebuttals for each one of these reasons. I hate using uh, Windows 10. I only use it for gaming. And you know what? Just to prove this point, let's go over to my actual desktop here. And uh, you'll see my normal desktop I, I love just using Linux and just doing this type of workflow. If I want to launch my browser, if I want to launch into, you know, my, I did my file browser, but if I want to launch my regular browser, I can do that. Or I can just quit out with one command. It's far more efficient. It's not spying. It's not doing all those 17 things I just said. I love this. And if you wanted to give it a whirl, by all means, I made an entire playlist called uh, Windows to Linux. And it's something that's not easy to do. I'm not gonna sit here and say, hey, this is better than Windows because it depends on the user. All I say is maybe open your mind a little bit as I was a little bit closed off myself as a lifelong Windows user. And after really getting acclimated in six months or so in, I really ended up becoming far more efficient, far more productive than I ever was in Windows. And now it's pretty much ruined me because I like just, I have a hard time ever using Windows or Mac or a lot of the other operating systems because I'm just like, ah, this would be so much faster if I was on my workspace, uh, which, you know, teach his own. But I wanted to show this aspect of it just to tell you, hey, Linux has come a long ways. And uh, with that, let me know your thoughts down in the comments section. As always, thank you to all my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one. And I'll see you in the next one.